Hello, and welcome to another episode. About four months ago, I got an acid array. It's a Raspberry Pi with acid array loaded on it. I decided that I'd make a video and review it um, because I was intending to use this to do all my capturing from then on. As you know, I do a lot of astro photography. And because of this, I was using Windows, and this is quite bulky because so I'm using a laptop. Now I attach this to my telescope and take, put all the uh, footage straight onto it. It makes the whole process a lot easier, but a lot of people wanted a more in-depth review, and it's something I've been meaning to do. Now it's been four months since I've actually done the original video, I thought now was a great time to go ahead and do this. Before I start the review, I'd like to give a big thank you to the developer and maintainer of Astroberry, and I've given a link to his GitHub page in the description below. Okay, so the recommended way of uh, connecting to your Astroberry server is through the browser. Um, so if you're on the Wi-Fi network, you need to get your IP address of the Astroberry from the router, otherwise you need to either use the local address uh, to connect to it if you're connecting directly to the Astroberry. Then you need to press start, it'll go to the desktop, then you need to enter in your password to get into the Astroberry. So connecting connect. And this will give you the Astroberry desktop. Once it's actually loaded, there we go. Um, you'll notice that I'm missing the uh, icon up here. Um, this, I'm not sure why this is. When I uploaded, for some reason it disappeared. But um, other than that, it's perfectly fine. So the main point of interest here is this special panel on the side. And this gives you control to things like your indie setup, which I'll talk about more in a minute. Uh, your settings which is quite important because when I initially logged on to it through the browser, it wasn't actually scaling properly and I had to alter the scaling mode. It's also got things like your GPS, which is uh, quite useful. It won't work now, obviously it's inside. Um, but I'm going to stop the conversation here because I found that accessing the Astroberry through the browser is actually quite unreliable and I'll often have to reconnect and which can be quite confusing if you're actually out uh, looking at stars through your camera and nothing's moving then you eventually you realize that in fact you're not getting a, a uh, signal anymore from the astroberry so i'm going to close this down and instead open it in vnc okay so i find that the uh, best way to connect to the astroberry is actually with vnc and this is a VNC viewer that I've got set up on my tablet. Um, and you can see that the standard IP address is usually that 10.42.0.1. Um, so I'm just going to connect to it now. And I'm connecting directly to the Astroberry. So it's actually set up as a hotspot. And this happens if automatically if it can't connect to a Wi-Fi. So if the Wi-Fi is not available, it will set itself up automatically the Astroberry as a hotspot so you can connect directly to it. And I will find this is always the best way to connect to the Astroberry. Now, when I first uh, started using the Astroberry, I used OA Capture, which is this option here. Um, and it will be able to connect to my, uh, it's basically planetary uh, capture software and it'll be able to connect to my camera. But since the last update, it seems to have lost it and come up with these strange um, options here. None of them seem to work. A lot of them seem to crash uh, the software, which is really irritating. Um, but this isn't an issue with Astroberry. I'm going to make this clear now. This is nothing to do with Astroberry. This is third-party software. Astroberry itself is the actual operating system, this here. And this is just add-ons to it. So what did I do after this happened? I tried to uh, roll back to an earlier version of OA Capture, but that wouldn't work. Um, so I tried to use the other software. Now, of course, when I initially started using uh, Astroberry, I wanted to use KSTARS because I heard that was a system to do to use on Linux. Um, and I set up everything in there. So Indy's all set up in there and stuff. And it does work. I can see video footage in there. But the problem is this is really a planetarium piece of software. And this is a common complaint about KSTARS. 
you've got your planetarium software here and then you open up ecos to actually start imaging and you start your indie software there and then you start imaging um you start imaging and controlling everything through here but the problem is it starts opening um many different windows and uh many different uh um, uses a lot of memory basically uses, opens a lot of windows and quite a few times this has crashed on me i find it quite unreliable to use on the raspberry pi again this isn't actually an issue with the astro berry um it's an issue with the software it should really be split in two but there's nothing much that can be done about that but anyway, this whole event um, encouraged me to explore the Asperger system more to find out what else was available. And I came across CCDL. Um, now, there is a slight gripe here. Um, nothing really major, but I think it would be nice if these um, icons the actual menu were kind of more appropriate. So maybe have an astronomy icon here, a labeled astronomy rather than education. But anyway, let's uh, go on to CCDL, which is a capture application now this fortunately does video as well as video as video as well as um photos so it allows me to do both um planetary and um and deep sky astrophotography now one of the confusing things if you're coming from a windows um environment is that you can't just plug in your camera and plus go um it doesn't work and what you've got to do is you've got to start Indie. Now, Indie is like a, um, a service that represents your whole setup. It's things like your camera in it, uh, control, the telescope mount, um, GPS, etc. Maybe observatory controls and more. And this has to be started before you can do anything. Um, now, one of the problems is if you're going into VNC, you don't have the controls down the side like I showed you earlier um, to start Indie. And auto start never seems to work properly. I try, I set it to auto start. It never actually starts. I have to go and stop and start it myself. So I could, there's no, and this is one problem, definite problem I find in Astro Berry. There is no control if you go directly to the Astro Berry to um, turn in the on and off or set it up. Um, now this, I may be wrong, maybe I'm missing something, but I did have a very good search, looked online, I, I couldn't find anything. But I did find that to connect to the um, web manager of Indie, you can actually go to a local host on a particular port and it will load up. So, and here we go. So I'm going to start Indie now. And by starting it, I switch on all the different services over here, which should mean when I come to this, I can connect. And if you look at the bottom, it should start uh, loading up. Okay, and you can see it's connecting there. Uh, it's setting the height and so on. Yes, so brilliant. So we're going to start the loop. Yeah, so when you connect to a Windows uh, or Windows software, it just shows you the video straight away, but you've actually got to start previewing. And here we go. So it's showing a complete loop now. This is like video. I'll show my living room floor. Um, it was options to preview, which is a single shot. And you've got um, camera settings here. So you can actually take a single shot for a camera, different exposures and so on. Focusing and a sequence of targets and video which I've been using to try and capture Mars recently which has been quite interesting in videos of Mars trying to capture the moons of Mars. Um, I would recommend when you are running your capture software to close down anything else you don't need. Um, so in this case I would close um, Chrome down because it uses quite a few resources. So I got uh, the video set up, but when I set it up, by default, the videos it produced were quite unusable. Um, it was producing OGV videos, which as far as I could see, there wasn't a player for in Windows. Um, 
and I managed to extract the data from it using the ffmpeg command line tool. Um, but even then, it was quite unreadable. Um, it was showing loads of, loads of weird shapes, and I was very confused about what was going on. So I managed to find out that you can switch to SIR, which is actually the best type of video format to use if you're doing planetary because it's uncompressed. And there is a built-in SIR player which over here, which is done by the same guys, the same guy who makes PIP. Um, and there's a Windows version as well, which is great because I do all my post-processing in Windows. Um, so what you need to do, uh, for me, for, for my camera in the Indie setup, was to go to streaming and switch from OGV to SIR. Uh, and that will get you the SIR file. But still, I did this and it's still, it was messed up. It was showing weird shapes and I couldn't figure out why on earth it was doing this. And I thought, you know, <laughs> the worst had happened and my camera was now broken. But in fact, it was because it was outputting by default for some reason in mono 16. I had the right resolution, but it was coming out in mono 16. So I switched over to mono eight. And once I did that, you get the images you see now, which is much nicer and crisp images. Okay, so another difference is uh, between Windows and Linux, you do need to disconnect um, the camera. So you remember to press the disconnect button. Yes, please. And then it's safe to shut down the application. Okay, a quick word about Indie. Um, this is kind of the uh, strange thing for people who use, um, go to the Linux side of things. Before you should, before you even consider um, any kind of Linux uh, system for your telescope, I recommend you research what is actually available for you in Indie. And are you actually covered? Because not everything is. Um, and some things are covered, but they don't work particularly well. So you will need to do a lot of reading before you actually consider switching over to Indie and uh, and getting it working. I have noticed um, when I did the switch that there is a lot more work to do to actually get it set up and running than there is on Windows. Windows, while Linux is definitely moving towards plug and play, and this is plug and play to a large extent, um, it's not to the same degree as Windows is. I mean, the my configuration you need to do is a lot higher, but it's a lot cheaper. Um, and because it's Linux, a lot of the apps don't require as many resources as they would in Windows. So it means you can use a lighter system. My, my system is powered by a small um, mobile phone power pack. Um, it's brilliant. I love it. Uh, and I think this system is Astro Berry is going to get better and better over time. Um, but mainly it's the Linux astronomy software that needs to improve and I'm sure it will improve and will become um, more user friendly, uh, especially for people who aren't particularly computer uh, mad. Well, uh, that's it for another episode. I hope you found that uh, review helpful and um, it covered most of the questions you've had about Astrobury. But if you do have any more questions, then please do ask them below in the comments. If you like the video, give us a like. And if you'd like to see more astronomy videos, then please do subscribe. Uh, goodbye and clear skies.